We're in the tail end of uh, Global Today. And also there's a debate uh, truly on how Kenya and uh, Tanzania are faring on in terms of uh, losing business. As you can see it uh, depicted here in this editorial cartoon. And I can see also PLO is uh, weighing in on this particular issue as well. He says, I practice law in Tanzania. I can confirm to you that it is overtaking Kenya in many areas and is currently ahead of us in tourism, that is in numbers, mining and agriculture. The East African spirit and the ongoing constitution making process must not be torpedoed, torpedoed by sibling rivalry occasioned by diplomatic faux pas from our side. So there's a whole debate regarding this as well currently. And this is what we've been discussing. We want now to turn the crack to the issue in Sudan as it is right now, where clashes flared up in parts of Sudan on the 100th day of the war on Sunday, as mediation attempts by regional and international powers failed to find a path out of an increasingly intractable conflict. Fighting broke out on April 15th as the army and paramilitary rapid support forces vied for power. 1,136 people have been killed, according to the health ministry, though officials believe the numbers is higher, with more than 700,000 people fleeing to neighboring countries. And still in Sudan, a Sudanese general rejected in a threatening language a Kenyan uh, a threatening language, a Kenyan led a proposal that East African peacekeepers help end more than a hundred day war in Sudan. In a video released on Monday drawing sharp criticism from Kenyan authorities, the Sudanese army and the rapid support forces currently fighting have received multiple international mediation offers, but none have succeeded in ending or even significantly pausing the fighting. Earlier this month, IGAD, of which Kenya is a member, proposed an initiative that included deployment of peacekeepers in the capital, Khartoum. Let's just listen in to this particular pronouncement by the general. Of course, it is in a foreign language, but Ahmed Hashi will have his indulgence in interpreting this particular uh, video that was doing rounds also on social media. <laughs> يجي زي الرئيس الكيني يقول أنا أجيب غوات شرق أفريقيا يا الرئيس الكيني يا الرئيس الكيني غوات شرق أفريقيا خليها في محلها أنت جيب أنت جيب الجيش الكيني تعال والدولة والدولة الدعمات الدعمات والدعم كل المرتزقة الزيارة الدعمات بالقرش مشتريات بالقرش كذا تتجيب جيشة والله والله غصب واحد فيهم بيرجع تاني ما في ما في قد بيرجع نحن يا أخوانا طريقنا واحد طريقنا واحد Sudan, Yashrik Ali, who shams the young Bakir, but I can't do it. So there is a, a warning to Kenya that has been flagged up there by the Sudan's, uh, Sudanese general. Ahmed Ashi, we uh, don't understand anything. It's going way over our head. So we <laughs> seek you to actually interpret for us. The ball, I have the, uh, the gist of what he's saying is you know that the rapid response force here in Karen. Um, we in the, the pan East Africa stand, East by, Africa force. stand by force. Um, the, we have called for it, and IGAD uh, has met in Ethiopia over how to send that uh, response force to Sudan. Mm -hmm. So, what uh, this gentleman is saying is that uh, we don't send uh, the East African East Force. If you Kenyans want to come intervene, come send your own army, and we will deal with you. <laughs> As they say in Kenya, perpendicularly. <laughs> you know, we move to a shindo kabisa because uh, on this point, I am completely in agreement with President Ruto. I am completely in agreement with the region. Uh, in fact, I am appalled that the East African standby force is not in Khartoum. 
I'm appalled. It has been a hundred years, and these fellows, these fellows, who, this guy shouting on TV there, has uh, made turned Khartoum into a rubble. They're using fighter jets to bomb neighborhoods. Um, he is on the side of the of Mr. Burhan, just as culpable as the other uh, chair of the RSF. The ball, what these two army generals don't want is intervention, because they want to have their secret slaughtering uh, house in the Sudan. Uh, where they can make sure that the army and the military are in charge of that country. Do you remember when the Israeli government came to uh, Khartoum and I told you on this table that the Sudan is trying to buy arms from Israel because they, I, I knew there was going to be a, a war, a civil war in that country. I predicted it right here on this show and it happened. Uh, Debal, it's a crying shame that uh, a senior commander in the government, because Mr. Burhani is uh, the president of Sudan, it is not uh, the deputy president, it's him. And this is one of his senior commands. For him to speak to our president in this manner and in this tone, uh, a, a person who's trying to help uh, in the intervention in the Sudan, is appalling. It's, um, it is a, a way of trying to cover up the footsteps of their murderous regime in which civilians in that country have been absolutely, completely destroyed. Three million refugees that are flowing into the Chad. Three million. Uh, you can see in the streets of Nairobi and our malls, the Sudanese elite have, have run away. Uh, Debal, uh, Sudan is too important for this region, for it to be turned into a rubble and to a private war between two generals over the resources of uh, the Sudan and uh, in the, the United Arab Emirates, the Saudi Arabians and the Gulf countries I have always on this show from day one condemned and urged uh, our region to expel even their ambassadors because these people are directly intervening in our, in, our, in our issues and I think that it is high time that our region stand stood up for itself. When we went to Addis Ababa the other day, the communique that came out, the ball was uh, wishy-washy. Nobody was saying what they were going to do. Uh, the East African standby force is just sitting um, on its hands, on its pants. Um, if we don't understand how to act in a decisive way uh, on issues of interven intervention, we might as well just forget about this integration, forget about the EGAD, uh, the African Union, because we're not doing our job. Hundreds and thousands of uh, people are dying and suffering in that place, and we're doing nothing about it. Sooner or later, as I said, the international terrorism is going to pitch camp in uh, Khartoum. And when we see that black flag rise of saying that there's going to be terror uh, in the region, then everybody is going to start saying, why did we not intervene in the beginning when we could nip it at the bud? And the ball, I promise you, in three months, and my predictions have always come true, you'll start hearing of the first explosions in Khartoum. Peter Kagwanja, we have uh, Kenya now being caught in this particular crosshairs as it is. Uh in terms of mediation, with, this seemed to be an impediment. This is not the first time that uh, we've had uh, the, the issue being flagged up. We saw during the EGAD summit as well, uh, done in Ethiopia is where they opted, to, not, not Ethiopia, but in Egypt, is where they actually opted to have an eye-on-eye -eye conversation. But it seems Kenya, uh, or the presence of Kenya, with these worrying factions in Sudan, is not welcome. So, diplomatically, what should we do? I, I don't think we need to do anything because we need to just do what we are doing. Why, what do I mean? Kenya is not there through but its own initiative. Let's, let's, be, let's put it in context. IGAD sat in Djibouti and elected three head, uh, four heads of state, or the four countries, that are going to backstop the Sudanese peace process. Mm -hmm. Kenya happened to be one of the four. And when analysis was done, we have South Sudan, we have Ethiopia, and we have Djibouti. Now, South Sudan itself is in a, in, in a bad state. Uh, you know, Ethiopia has just emerged from, from war in Tigray. It's still hearing. Djibouti is, is a tiny country in the, in the Horn of Africa. Uh, beautiful, but small. Mm -hmm. Now, Kenya is the regional anchor. So naturally, Kenya chairs the team. Now, Kenya is not going there as Kenya. It's going as part of a, of a team. Uh, President Ruto is not uh, imposing himself on any mediation. He's simply being invited to, to chair a, a regional initiative. So what, what the team, uh, the government in Sudan is doing is being recalcitrant. 
in other words, does not want the mediation uh, of a regional body uh, because there, there, there are no alternatives inside there, uh, if you look at it. Now, if Ethiopia is made the chair, the, the government is going to do the same because they are now going to argue that uh, you know, it's under pressure of Egypt and others. They are, go they are going to say, you know, Ethiopia is partisan. Uh, because of the, the neighbor. They already have had uh, skirmishes within this, this particular period. So uh, I, I think we, we, the, the, I mean, uh, people need to, to stop listening to this general. Mm -hmm. Do what needs to be done Correct. is to restore peace in Sudan. Uh, there are those arguments about being in touch with Hamedi. Uh, Hamedit. I mean, he's, he, he has done more, he has done, he's a vice president mm -hmm. and has done more diplomacy than yes. the government. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was uh, in Qatar, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Yemeni, right, in terms of the, the troops and uh, in that conflict. He has been in Chad in that conflict. He has been in Libya in that conflict. And therefore, he's well, well networked. And it, so it's not about Kenya. It's about how the kind of networks he has done in Saudi Arabia and so on. Meaning, we must stick to a igad led peace process in Sudan. And if it is igad led then you can only replace Kenya with Uganda. But you cannot shove it down their throats. Uh, if well, you have a conflicted uh, parties, that are, you cannot come and say, oh, we, we are imposing. This is an igad led <laughs> You have actually to deal with it, but that's, whether you like it, lump it or not. No, we... we, we this, I don't know. I'm not an expert on conflict resolutions. But if we have a person who has taken special umbrage because he thinks there is a, a party that is actually taking sides on this particular negotiations, it beat the purpose of actually you, you carrying out the entire negotiation. No, no the the, this is a four country mediation team. It's but a four country. Which we agree, the, but there's, there's one problem there <laughs> because the person you're trying to mediate he is not comfortable with you. Hmm. But mediate, mediation are not so, comfortable so, with the people. Okay. All I, the time. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is now we have a conflict resolution, uh, you know, coming to the surface. We need, we need, how, do you ha how do you handle it? We need conflict yeah. resolution between yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. a marriage. If yeah. I don't when do you yeah. admit? Yeah. <laughs> Who do you admit it? Dr. Gango, what do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, Dibal, um, we are getting it wrong again. Um, there's conflict management and transformation. Now, IGAT or anybody who is interested in the conflict can actually choose what instruments they want to use. Now, using mediation is a wrong um, um, route because... For this. For mm -hmm. this. Um, because uh, the mediators already are rejected. Mm -hmm. Because a mediator has to be neutral yes. and has to be acceptable by all parties that, uh, to come in to assist. Mm -hmm. yeah. And since the mediator, the mediator eager, or some people in, in the mediation process are rejected, that route should not be taken. The EGAD probably needs to look at other instruments. Uh, the last instrument is the use of force. The East African Standby Brigade to move in and uh, pacify Sudan. But if that is the last resort, then they should stop using mediation where it does not apply. Yeah. yeah, so you can't uh, use it, force. It, it yeah. is so going to fail. It's going to fail. Yeah. Yes. And if it's mediation, then the, the parties that are, are in questions, they, they have they should to not do be it taking the, the leading role. Yes. Right. Dr. Kananji. <laughs> I don't think there's an alternative to mediation. Uh, force is just not a viable option you know, right now in Sudan. You're going to need a lot of hardware a lot of um, manpower uh, in terms of military capacity to actually intervene militarily against the wishes of the parties in there. Sudan, uh, even with the current conflict, does not have a very small army. They've been doing battle for a very long time. They even developed capacity to produce tanks and stuff like that, you know, uh, working closely you know, with Moscow and other, and other players. It is not a country you're just going to invade and somehow think against their will that uh, you're not going to suffer unbelievable casualties. It's going to be just another experiment of Moscow in Ukraine, you know, when the other parties is not exactly willing 
and they even have supporters to, uh, to, to aid them in fighting you. So that is not exactly an option. However, if we have to pursue the path of mediation, we need to try and do it correctly. If the Kenyan leadership is not acceptable at all, mm -hmm. you know, then can we be able to explore an alternative? Or how about then we bring other players on board? Remember, these parties are being funded and aided by powers that Kenya, as well as the world, has relationship with. And so they are likely to respond more to persuasion coming from those other parties mm -hmm. than sometimes to parties that they think, well, they have nothing to lose by saying no to. Meaning we need to bring players in the Gulf on board. And we need to bring Washington and Brussels on board. Because they have the tools, the sticks and the carrots to be able to make certain things stick. Because they have the ability to punish at the same time. If we don't, remember, Al Burhan's entire uh, thing after they removed uh, El Bashir, what happened is the Gulf countries channeled billions of dollars to literally keep him afloat. See, and so as long as he keeps getting some of this support and Hemedi keeps whatever support he's getting, it becomes difficult for them to actually listen to regional mechanisms. But now to the extent that they're already branding Kenya as partisan, I do not think Kenya has an partisan interest per se in that, you know. But, but with that labeling... Yeah, with that labeling, it becomes increasingly difficult. But again, uh, as much as I love my country, we've also said certain things in the recent past that will have not been very helpful. Mm. Uh, while that was not the official Kenyan government's position, the fact that we've had a few loose cannons from our republic have actually served to undermine some of our credibility with regard to intervention in the region. But pursuing a path towards mediation diplomacy, there's no, there no option to that. And so the IGAT framework, supported by the African Union, endorsed by the United Nations, is still the only clear path. The moment you leave that, remember they are competing efforts at mediation. But unfortunately, they're coming from parties that have a, uh, certain specific interests to secure. Whether it's going to come from our brothers in Cairo, or it's going to come from Riyadh, it's going from Abu Dhabi, or even from, 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 from Moscow, or from the, the United States. It's going to be challenging to ensure that thing sticks outside the framework that involves regional countries as well as the African Union. And so we need then, to, how can we make the current mechanisms more robust, but also more acceptable. Now, I would suggest that Kenya should not be responding to that particular general. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should actually even respond to him. And too, I will be well advised, you know, just to ignore the you know, Swahili say, Kelele Zachura Zimzui Ngombe Kunyomaji. Because when we respond to that particular general, who is not even a Burhan himself, you know, we're going to give him credibility. Then we start picking up these small fights, and that is going to reduce, our, you know, our, uh, the, the kind of image we already have. We are bigger boys. We're not going to start playing with, with small boys. So do we go also with the mentality, because we heard also from uh, uh, the leadership that, uh, you know, the warring factions in Sudan is such a small matter. From that particular premise as well, now that we're going to mediate and they have the mentality that you've actually taken this to be a small matter, uh, from your own pronouncement, uh, that also is making, you know, the leadership maybe chew back some of his words that are pronounced. If you may remember, I, I, yeah, yeah, of course, you, that, you know. So you're trifling what is happening in Sudan, we, yet you want to really go and mediate there. Of course, that's why I say, you know, some of the statements uh, that some of our own citizens, uh, who are public figures, and uh, some of them, you know, in government, have not served to help the cause of Kenya and has served to really compromise the president's position to be able to uh, speak with a certain degree of authority and credibility. And that is why I think uh, when it comes to commenting on foreign issues, we should leave it to the relevant persons to do that. All right. Not all of us should be doing that. Ashi. Tibal, um, the question is whether or not African lives matter. The question uh, for me is whether or not there is a responsibility to protect people. The, these two questions have to be answered by the bureaucratic uh, analysis uh, in one way or the other. I believe that um, <clears throat> the whole concept 
that you cannot intervene in the internal affairs of another country is now passe. I mean, it's uh, probably the most ridiculous concept. And Rwanda's genocide is an example of what intervention means. Uh, the ball already there are signs that there are, there's genocide going on in Darfur, where the RSF is slaughtering hundreds of people every day. They're using rape as an instrument. And shallow graves have, have actually been discovered as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. While we're dilly-dallying about uh, what bureaucratic tool to use and what these lives of these Africans matter, it is the people there who are sovereign. And if the region has any conception about what kind of um, <laughs> diplomatic, uh, if I can use that word, and uh, tools and uh, intervention tools that we ought to be using in this 21st century, I think the ball this puts to paid mm -hmm. the idea that uh, some colonel in Khartoum says that Kenya should not be part of this. Okay, Kenya is part of it. And they just have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that they are the ones who are killing Sudanese people. Mm -hmm. Three million refugees have gone to the Chad. Mm -hmm. It's destabilizing a whole set of countries. Nigeria and the ECOWAS was already meeting about what is going on in the Sahel. This thing has a rolling effect on everybody. And uh, I don't think that we have the time to sit around and say, um, what is the best process of asking the Sudanese government? There is no Sudanese government. There's a civil conflict. The government there has been overthrown. It was a military dictatorship. The region has certain responsibilities under the African Union. It has certain responsibilities under the EGAD. It has certain responsibilities under the East African community. We cannot sit around and, and, and just watch what is going on. The ball. Uh, you know, they killed 200,000 lives in uh, South Sudan during the civil conflict between Mr. Kir and Mr. Bashar. The, the, the president of Museveni, if there's only thing I've ever, ever agreed with the president of Uganda, sent troops to Juba and the bloodletting stopped. Mm -hmm. well, uh, we have to start thinking a little bit above our pay, just a little bit. Because the world, uh, we know that uh, Sudan has vast amounts of minerals, vast amounts of oil, vast amounts of this and that and a group of countries in the gulf which are states that uh, kowtow to other states have decided that they're going to cause bedlam in our region they're doing it in somalia they're doing it in uh, sudan they're doing it in south sudan they're doing it in uh, ethiopia uh, we as a region have to wake up and smell uh, the tea as it were and say what is, what are we supposed to do are we are going to allow this state crisis of the state to come down to Sudan and then come up to northern Kenya and reach Nairobi? The ball, international terrorism is plotting right now. And do you know what, who's going to be blown up? It's the Egyptians who are going to be blown up from Sudan. Then it's going to be the uh, Eritreans. Then it's going to be the Ethiopians. Then next is going to come to us. All right. We have to start thinking in a way that is decisive and we have to start calling in the military and telling us what they can do. And in that way, Debal, we can stop this kind of uh, bloodletting in our region. All right, but decisively also, you need to tell us whether Kenya should pursue uh, this medi mediation or they should now think, step back and think if the one parties are uncomfortable with their position. I think we should completely ignore what they are saying because these people are not normal people. They are practicing mass killings in their country. They don't think they have any moral authority to lecture Kenya on anything. Okay. Well, let's hear from I, I think for me the main point has been uh, whether or not we understand the complexity of uh, the conflict in Sudan. That, that has, it's not whether we are able to intervene or so, so and so is complaining. We as Kenya. Yes, Kenya. Okay. Uh, and, and, and the effectiveness of, of our intervention is what I would be more worried about than uh, the, the, no, the noises within Sudan. Because uh, Sudan is a complex three way conflict. And uh, the talk between uh, Medit and uh, Burhani is, is, not, is one of the strands in this conflict. Uh, we have Hamdok, who has been coming here as well, the civilian leader. So we have, one, on the one hand, the civilian leadership, which is cu currently ignored because of the ongoing war. And the civilian leadership is the legitimate leader of the land, because uh, Sudan is supposed to be civilian. Now, the two fighting forces, uh, which makes the other two 
uh, major actors, the, mili the military, the official military led by Burhani, and then the rapid response uh, force led by uh, Mohamed Dagaro, uh, Ahmedit. The two are coup makers. They are the ones who removed uh, Bashir. Uh, that was the first coup. They carried the second coup against the civilian uh, government to stop the, the transition to a civilian leadership and therefore derailing the transition process which was to, supposed to have completed by now. So when you go, you go in now to mediate, what is it that you want to achieve? Yeah. Do you want to reinstate either a medit or Burhani or what do you want to do? So it must be a more holistic uh, you know, uh, mediation that restores that one, silence the guns uh, between the two fighting generals. Two, reinstate the civilian regime. And then from there, you negotiate a peace for a lasting peace for Sudan. Because lasting peace is not having either Burhani or Dagaro there. Because for them, they are fighting over only one thing who is the commander in chief of the armed forces. That's what they are fighting about. Mm -hmm. And one is the commander, one is the commander, the other one is the deputy commander. Now, without anybody presiding of them after they toppled Bashir, then they have no, uh, they simply have nobody to call them to order. Yes, and these, uh, these are military leaders. Mm -hmm. So, when one of the military leaders say Kenya cannot be there, uh, Kenya would be responsible to listen to that noise. Because the agenda is larger than the stating a military general or uh, asserting uh, another military general. So that, that's, that's the point that mm -hmm. I want right. to make. Okay. Let's hear from uh, Dr. Moses Nyango. We want also to just move to Somalia a little bit. Yes. Um, I would like to restate that um, it is important that the mediator is acceptable. Uh, and that is uh, the, the standing point. Uh, a mediator cannot impose mm -hmm. himself or herself on the product, protagonist. So uh, much as it complex as it, as it is, um, we need to look at all the different intervention mechanisms in place, preventive diplomacy, uh, and use all other uh, avenues, um, uh, options of peacekeeping forces. All those should be uh, looked at. And of course, if we decide that mediation is the right thing, then the mediators must be acceptable. They must be acceptable. And it yes. seems also in Somalia we're not being accepted as well because Somalia says it will not accept mediation over a maritime dispute with Kenya, which the International Court of Justice decided on October 2021. Somalia State's uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Ali Mohammed Omar, told the Committee of MPs that Somalia was not in any talks with Kenya to resolve the dispute. The issue had been raised on Saturday by a member of a parliamentary committee who sought clarification from states the federal government following reports that Kenya's President William Ruto had asked the Djiboutian counterpart Omar Ismail Guela to help broker the deal. The minister instead says Somalia will, be, will abide by the court's ruling, which mostly re-demarcated the sea border between the two countries. Regarding the remarks made by Ruto, the maritime dispute was settled by the ICJ and there is no turning point on that. The court verdict favored Somalia's sovereignty. This is what Omar stated. And in October 2021, the court agreed with most of Somalia's claims and dropped others. The SEJ decision are binding to the parties and have no option for appeal. However, the two countries will need to actually re-demarcate the boundaries as decided by the court. All right. Could you also talk about this maritime dispute and uh, why the president went to Djibouti to seek also uh, the re intervention of the president of Djibouti on this particular matter. <laughs> Dr. Asad Khalid. Well, I don't know if the president has said he went to ask uh, for Djibouti. Uh, according to report, the way it's been reported here. Yes, and th those are sources that are coming from Somalia, you know. <laughs> and, and, and so we don't know exactly what is happening. Perhaps uh, uh, someone may be facing some challenges internally <laughs> and they want to change the discussion. <laughs> and, and so... <laughs> <laughs> One thing they knew is that uh, it really served uh, those days for Maju very well to uh, take on Kenya and uh, try to use the issue as a tool to weigh up the nationalist sentiment within Somalia. But I will say this. Um, 
Again, I would suggest, you know, Kenya do not respond to that at all. Uh, that is something that uh, is long term. Kenya's position is they will not cede an inch. And I do not expect, I, I think, any government uh, in Kenya in the foreseeable future that, is, that position is going to change. But Kenya and Somalia, they are brothers, uh, brotherly countries that are tied at the hip. Uh, they're going to need each other. They're going to need to jointly be able to find a way of actually exploiting the resources uh, along their, not just you know, their, their common borders on land, but also in, in the sea. And so, um, not thinking that Kenya is actually going to start get, engaging into this thing, but ultimately, because Kenya's position is that it has not changed despite the ruling, remember we pulled out even before the ruling happened, uh, I expect at some point there are going to be negotiations. So whether that's going to be conducted by Djibouti or Sao Tome Principe is something else. Or it's going to be direct, it's something else. However, ultimately, that is the way such issues are always resolved. They have never been resolved by the International Court of Justice. And I still expect that is going to happen that way. So are we in um, contempt of court as a country? Uh, we are a sovereign to, country. In regard to re demarcation, <laughs> we, 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 the ICJ does not determine the borders of and Kenya. It's not a court, it's yes. an, an arbitration. Yeah, arbitration. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it is ICJ, ball, International the ball, I think Court of Justice. I, I agree with the sentiments of my brother here on the left. Uh, well, you know, I think that uh, we bungled this issue. We bungled it at the bureaucratic <laughs> level at the Foreign Office. Then we went to court and then we withdrew. Um, it, it, was a, it was a bumbling nature from beginning to end. Uh, this is why, Dabal, I uh, insist that the East African um, community is not, uh, is not a utopian. I insist that it is rea reality. And it's going to solve a lot of these uh, ridiculous uh, little problems we have in this region. Uh, because the ball, you know, once you have oil coming out of uh, Somalia and we put up the refinery in Lamu, Kenya will make the same amount of money per barrel that the Somalis are making on the oil. That's called East Africa. Um, the issues of uh, Uganda and Kenya over milk. Huh? If we have a joint uh, milk policy on this uh, region, uh, we will stop these issues of uh, going to West <laughs> Africa to look for milk. So, the ball, <coughs> it is the multilateral nature of the East African community that is our hope. It's a way of going through, because when the colonial government came to this country, to this region, they all drew maps over everybody. So there's Luos over in uh, the other side of Nyanza, there's uh, this fellow's community over on the other side, there's my community over inside in Mogadishu. But uh, we were one people before these boundaries were created by the colonial system. So, you know, from the other side of the Somalis, the Somalis feel that we, uh, we have eaten up uh, a substantial amount of the region called northern Kenya. Uh, this is the feeling over there. It is not our feeling over here. And when you say that they will now eat more here in the coast, they're going to get up in arms and they're going to start to fight us. So the problem that we need to solve about is not demarcations of borders or who owns what. It's to create an overarching institution called East Africa that is going to solve those problems at the table inside the East African system. That is the way forward. But if we decide that we are going to start looking at the rulers and the cartographic cato cartography, I beg your pardon, we are all going to go to the same sinkhole that the colonial government system left us here, which is for us to bicker up about who is in Taveta and who is in Taita. That's the problem. And I think, uh, the ball, it's a very high time that the political leadership of, this, of, of the region stood up to these issues and said, no, we're not going to allow this kind of uh, nonsense. I'll give you a specific example. Mount Kilimanjaro was given as a present mm -hmm. by Queen Victoria to Prince Albert. And then they went back to the cartographic map and they drew a line in a little bit of a square to accommodate Kilimanjaro into Ki Tanzania. Wake up. Wake up and stand for this country called East Africa because what has been left with us are these little time bombs that are exploding all over the continent and unless we solve them here maturely, we're never going to get anywhere. So we have uh, Somalia really now, they've gone through the rigmarole of joining the East African community. Does this also beat the spirit of brotherhood 
that Somalia is seeking within the East African community? Mm. Very important. Well, well, obviously, whether we are in the East African community or not, countries would like to define themselves and their boundaries. And uh, one point that has been made by Dr. Haninje, which is right, is that uh, at the end of the day, and it is clear in both Mogadishu and Nairobi, people have to sit down right. and talk. And uh, there are very many options to this. We don't have to talk about boundaries. What is Nigeria and Cameroon doing about their common border? Yeah. They're exploiting resources on the both sides. Both. With, with an, an agreement. It's not very difficult for Kenya and Somalia to, to have a common agency for the exploitation of whatever resources we want there. Uh, it, it's possible. Um, it is also possible for us to agree on uh, negotiating the boundaries. Correct. Um, if Kenya and Tanzania had, were, did not agree on the border, I mean, on, on negotiating on the border. That was the most tricky. Because uh, if Kenya insisted on what we, we, we have insisted, the, the parallel east uh, Rhine uh, with, the, with the Tanzania, would have basically eaten into Tanzania's island nations, like Pemba mm -hmm. uh, and others. Uh, so we had to agree to move somehow. And that's wh why mediation is very, very important. Uh, Kenya, from the beginning, thought that we, could, we, had, we had it very easy from a brotherly perspective in negotiation with Tanzania, that the same would happen. But then there were so many entrepreneurs, uh, those who now follow the case, there were so many entrepreneurs on the Kenya, uh, you know, Somalia border, uh, both Kenyans and Somalis. And they, they ended up basically looking for jobs rather than solving uh, the, the problem, the, the challenge between the two countries. And that's how we ended up in court. Yes. Now, the, the, the last, last year's election was largely determined by the, the, the maritime question. Why do I say so? Because you needed somebody in Mogadishu who has credibility amongst the Somali people and who at the same time would, would look like credible by Kenyans to solve that particular problem. And what we have just started by doing is reviving the joint uh, commission with the Somali. Very important. And within the joint commission, we can discuss all Everything. the problems, including the maritime. And Dr. Hassan has not yet come here. The and president the, of Somalia the, is supposed to come for that. Yes, and the, 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 the president himself has been, I mean, I paid, uh, the first state visit we have had is, uh, and, and I don't think we have had a better time in terms of our peace relations with Somalia. And uh, Hassan Sheikh himself uh, was, was the, the leader who was in office when this case went to the Hague. Mm -hmm. And therefore he's better positioned than any other leader yeah. to basically get to people talking. Yeah, yeah. It's not for To get the people talking. He's the one who will get the people talking. Thank you. And, and, and therefore I don't think it's uh, such a big issue now. Right. Let's hear from uh, Dr. Moses Nyango. Then we wind up. I think yes. we're also stuck for time. Yeah. Um, I think the, uh, the sovereign state is not dead. Uh, the nation state is still in existence. But the state also exists within an environment of other states. And uh, states also, there's a process of regional integration and also global integration. And the reason why states do this is because there are particular issues that they cannot solve by themselves. They need to collaborate. Mm -hmm. So when Kenya becomes a signatory and ratifier of international statutes, it ought to obey them because if they reject them, then they have to have an alternative. And there are alternatives, uh, uh, diplomatic negotiations mm -hmm. with uh, neighboring states to solve that particular problem. So if they have rejected the ru court ruling, mm -hmm. it is in bad taste, but they need to have an alternative to it. So approaching Djibouti or any IGAD member state or East African countries, because Somalia is bidding to join, is a good process to try to negotiate the maritime uh, issue. Mm. But uh, rejecting this particular international conventions that they have uh, s uh, signed and ratified is in bad taste. Mm -hmm. yes. So in the first place, you should, uh, should be aware that when you're going to join this uh, uh, or you're making this ratification on the international uh, on, a, on international arena like ICJ or like the Hague, you have to live with the ramifications, mm -hmm. which flies in the face of what uh, also uh, Dr. Kanendi is saying, that we are a sovereign state and the ICJ's decision does not hold water at the end of the day. Briefly, as we're winding up also, mm -hmm. give your headline thoughts. Yes, uh, and of course we are not part of the final uh, processes uh, within the ICJ. But I would say this. 
uh, Kenya has going through is at crossroads and going through some challenging you know times in recent days but Kenya is still an exceptional and indispensable country in this region and we have a lot to be proud of and we must fight and guard it jealously to preserve the peace and stability that makes us the shining city on the hill thank you thank you well I, I, I firmly believe that the um, process of reconciliation of our political leaders is the most important issue for us uh, for the coming weeks and uh, we urge the president uh, to as i said 24 hours after he was sworn in to call these two gentlemen to state house have a cup of tea and discuss the future of this country and put the end to our troubles mm -hmm. all right peter kagonja your headline thoughts um basically i would, I would go with what uh, asha said that uh, we need to keep our eye on the on the price and the price here is restoring the image of Kenya. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the protests, uh, in this protest, there is no victor. Mm -hmm. uh, because the only, the, we only have a loser, and that is Kenya. Mm -hmm. And Kenya is losing in multiple fronts. Uh, we are losing from uh, business, as we have indicated. We are losing in terms of uh, our image as a country that can uh, backstop other countries. And therefore, our leaders need to talk. And the talk is not a Raira Ruto talk as it is projected here. It is a more complex uh, talk. Uh, we need to have uh, William Ruto and uh, Uhuru Kenyatta talking uh, because that, that, that's, that's a big, big issue. And that's why the issue of Uhuru supporting Raira is coming up because there's an unfinished business there. That need to be finished. Thank you. We no need now to get Raira and uh, Ruto talking. Right, thank you. Yeah. Dr. Moses and Yango, thank you. Also, yeah. your headline thoughts? Yeah, thank you, um, Dibal. Um, national order, regional order, international order are of essence. So leaders must take advantage of the mechanisms available to maintain order mm -hmm. nationally, regionally, and internationally. And dialogue is the beginning of that process of order. Right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Moses Anyango. Really do appreciate there. Director, of course, of uh, Public Policy and International Affairs at uh, USAU. Also want to thank you, Director uh, of the Hone Institute, Dr. Hassan Kanenje. Ahmed Hashi, Governors and Policy Analysts, we want to thank you. Also, CEO of Africa Policy Institute, Professor Peter Kagonja, thank you for your input. Very insightful, very, of course, uh, broadening in our understanding as far as the regional integration is concerned and matters diplomacy and foreign policy, and of course, security. Thank you for your valued company. You've been watching Global Today. Don't go away. We have news there, which is coming.